Hey Knicks fans, this video should give you hope. Hope that there is a scenario where you guys can make a logical decision in the draft. Yo, what's going on guys? It's Luke, and if you're new, make sure to go check out my other videos. I post some pretty lit content that I know you will enjoy. And also, make sure to press that like button and subscribe if you're not already, because this video took me about three hours to make, and it only takes you a second to like and subscribe. And make the time I put into this totally worth it. So just go down, do that, it's not that hard. You don't even have to pause the video, and it's free. But look, Knicks fans have been through a lot of pain in the past god knows how long. They have a hard time making good decisions when it comes to any aspect of basketball. So today we're going to be looking at the decisions the Knicks can make in the draft that would be the right decision for this team and this franchise. Now I've constructed three different trade ideas for this pick, and a bunch of other draft pick scenarios and picks that I feel like that'll fit with this Knicks team and just have a lot of potential that would be available at that number eight spot. So without further ado, let's get into this video. It's weird to think that every NBA star that you've seen today has come from the NBA draft. The draft is where greatness starts. The draft is where greatness hatches from its egg. I don't know what I just said. And while this specific draft class isn't known for being that deep, there's still a lot of candidates that I think make sense. Number one player I like here for the Knicks is one of my favorite players in the entire draft, Tyrese Halliburton. Came out of Iowa State, and I've said this for a while, he reminds me of Steve Nash. Now don't go insane, don't lose your shit, because I'm not saying he's the next Steve Nash, I'm saying there's similarities. He might have the best basketball pure IQ in the entire draft class. He's shown a lot of promise defensively, and he's shown that he can lead his team. His jump shot isn't really one motion, it looks a little bit funky, but one, it actually goes in, and two, this stuff is easily fixable in the NBA. Watching him play, just seeing his passing ability is just what makes me fell in love with his game. Very efficient shooting 50% from the field, and that's obviously something we don't see from a lot of players coming out of college. He's like an NBA player in college. He's an all-around guard. He could do pretty much everything on the floor. He's exactly what the Knicks team needs. First of all, they need a point guard. Second of all, they need someone that can come in and lead. Third of all, they need someone with potential. Fourth of all, they need someone who could defend. Fifth of all, fifth of all, wow. Fifth of all, they need someone that can pass the ball. And this dude, Tyrese Halliburton, put up seven assists this year at Iowa State, so he's the real deal. And he's my favorite point guard in this draft besides LaMelo Ball, who won't be available here. If he's available, the Knicks have to take him. He's perfect for the spot. In my opinion, he best fits with the Phoenix Suns, but I doubt he falls to number 10. So the Knicks should grab him here if he's still available because I think he could be a very, very, very valuable future asset. Next player I like here is Isaac Okoro. The reason I like Isaac Okoro is he's a taller lengthier more potential patrick beverly and what i mean by this is he's a hustler he's a very skilled defender and he could shoot threes he brings that dog mentality that every team needs especially the knicks who have been struggling for a while as i've mentioned about 15 times in this video already his story in college kind of reminds me of jaron jackson jr and here's why coming out of college a lot of fans were skeptical about jaron jackson jr because his numbers didn't look that great he put up 13 points and 10 rebounds, which in a lot of cases would be an undrafted player. But there was something about him that looked like it would translate perfectly to the NBA, which it did. And this is the same thing for Isaac Okoro. Numbers aren't everything in this situation. Put up 13 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 2 assists, shooting a very efficient 51% from the field, while putting up a steal and a block a game. Now I know his 3 point percentage doesn't look all that, and his shot can definitely use some improvement but we've seen it go in from time to time and he could definitely develop into like a much better robert covington they just need that defense and i think isaac okoro brings that again numbers aren't everything so this would be a great pickup for the knicks get that wing spot for the future so let's move on last prospect i'm going to be looking at before we get into the trades is my guy aaron nesmith or naismith coming out of vanderbilt putting up 23 points per game this dude is a three-point shooting machine. He is a scorer, he's efficient, and he's a, one of the best three-point shooters I have ever seen in the draft. Putting up an astronomically insane 52% from the three-point line. He is the definition of modern NBA. Now, if you thought he was just a three-point shooter, you're kind of right. But there's a lot of things in his game that are developing to be great. And I could see his potential in his game. He has a great build sitting at 6'6", 213. And he also grabs five rebounds and puts up over a steal a game. This dude can play defense as well. He's a great 3 and D player who can literally shoot the lights out of the ball. I think there's a lot of other things that can develop through his game. But what we know now is he can hit that three. 
He put up 23 points per game. There's not much else you can ask. And the improvement we've seen from his freshman to sophomore season has been amazing. Putting up 11 points per game on 29 minutes in his freshman year. Now going into his sophomore year, putting up 23 points on 36 minutes. So only a 7 minute difference, but a 12 point difference. All his other statistical categories have also gone up. And what we like to see out of draft prospects is improvement. And he could shoot the 3 and he's improved a lot. He could be big for this Knicks team and he's full of potential. Now, let's get into some possible trade ideas that I've constructed. And now in this trade, the Knicks are giving someone up who I know they hate with a passion. I don't really know why. As a Lakers fan, seeing this player, he was great. I, I thought he had a lot of potential and now Knicks fans hate him for whatever reason. But he's getting shipped off in this video because the Knicks would be shipping Julius Randle and a first round pick for Nikola Vucevic. Look, Nikola Vucevic over the years has been a two-time All-Star proven to be an elite center in this league top five top six if you ask me the knicks are giving up julius randall getting off his money who they hate and they're getting an elite center they're getting an elite player here he's led the magic to two playoff appearances done everything he can putting up 20 and 11 consistently vuzovic is the real deal and the magic would be doing this to one free up mo Bamba because they drafted him for a reason and they get that eighth pick so if the knicks don't really see anybody that they'd like this would be a possible idea for the knicks this next trade I came up with is kind of a trading for the future, I'd say. The Knicks would be trading the number 8th pick for two future first round picks from the Suns. Now look, the Suns were basically a playoff team this year. They expect to be good in the future, so they think, okay, giving up a 2023 first round pick wouldn't have a big impact because we're all in on our present right now. We have Devin Booker, we have Kelly Oubre Jr., we have Young Assets, we have DeAndre Ayton, we have a team that's ready to compete. So adding another young prospect for two future picks in this situation would be what the Suns would be thinking and I think James Jones would be thinking, rightfully so. They went 8-0 in the bubble and I think something like that can continue in this regular season. Shout out my boy Suns Geek. But this is again if the Knicks don't see anything here that they like in the draft at this point, they can make a trade like this for two future picks. And whether those two picks are number 20 and number 25, they're two first round picks. So it's a very low risk trade because number one, you're getting two first round picks no matter what. And number two, the Suns still have potential to be pretty bad in the next couple of years. So the Suns are all in, the Knicks aren't. So this trade makes sense for both teams. Now I know why you guys clicked on this video. You saw it in the thumbnail. Who was that in the thumbnail? It was Zach Levine. So we're getting to that trade right now. The trade is Zach Levine for Bobby Portis in pick eight this year. Look, it's been rumored that the Bulls have been trying to trade Zach for a while now, and rumors and rumors and rumors have been flying around the NBA for a while. Number one, the Bulls would be doing this to get off some money. After this year, they'd technically be getting off $20 million from Zach Levine's contract because they're trading for Bobby Portis, who's only on a one-year deal, and he'll be up after this year. And they're also getting that eighth pick, which they can add another young asset. Again, the Bulls are rebuilding. I know a lot of people know that, but I just got to confirm. Adding young assets, especially a mid-round lottery pick, would be key. Trading someone like Zach Levine, who is very talented but is a ball stopper, is something that might have to happen. If I'm the Knicks, I'm thinking, okay, he puts up 24 points per game. For his production, he's on a kind of friendly contract, and he's only on a two-year deal, so it's not like he'll be a part of this team forever. The Knicks, this is a low-risk trade. You're knowing what you're getting from Zach Levine. Again, if they don't see anybody they like in the draft, they can do this. They get someone who they know will produce. And obviously, the Knicks are just trying to get better. The Knicks are trying to be good. They get someone they can put next to RJ Barrett who can score. I think this makes sense for both teams. They're getting off Bobby Portis, who I know Knicks fans don't like either. Overpaid, everything, all that jazz. But anyways, guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys really enjoy. Today, we went over all the possible scenarios that I think were logical for this Knicks team because they like to make a lot of unlogical moves when it comes to the NBA. So anyways, guys, make sure to do all that good stuff in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe. It really makes a massive difference if you just click those two buttons. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to stay tuned.